Hey, what's up guys? Josh Donnelly here with yet another pro theme cornerstone tutorial, except in today's video, we are actually going to shake things up a little bit and take a look at what the future holds for cornerstone as a platform. Now you'll see here that I've got the first beta of version six loaded up here. And while there are some bugs that the team is taking care of, and we'll look at those in a second, uh, there are some phenomenal UI updates and just underlying platform updates as part of this release. Now I know there's a lot of concern over, oh my my goodness, the UI is changing and I'm going to have to relearn workflows. Really, at the end of the day, the core workflows and the way you do things within Cornerstone are going to feel very, very familiar with a lot of added value um, and enhanced UI elements. And while a few things do change and do move around, my hope is that a video like this today, for those of you who aren't part of the beta, you can at least get familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with what to expect uh, when things roll out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, you've probably heard me use this term before, but Cornerstone really is a platform. I know it's a page builder, but it does function far different from a lot of other page builders out there where once you dive in, you don't really need to leave Cornerstone from a front end perspective. And so what I mean by that is we don't even need to create our pages here. Now, it's it's always been set up this way, but they've really enhanced the UI so that you really realize you don't need to leave the Cornerstone platform. So we have no pages set up, so we're going to just do this from scratch. We're going to click on Cornerstone here. It's going to load up the builder. It's loading up in its default state right now, which is the workspace on the right, and then my Cornerstone menu here on the left. Um, personally, I still prefer the workspace on the left, and it's an easy change. We just come right down here to Preferences. We click on that, and where it says Workspace Right, we are simply going to toggle that to Workspace Left. Now, a couple of things that I already have set up here, you guys know that I like to have the Dev Toolkit enabled, and then Inset Preview, which we'll take a look at in a second, is a really cool option to sort of separate uh, your... Um, preview of what you're building from the workspace. So let's go ahead and take a look at things. We're going to first click on this plus button. And some of this terminology is changing here. Uh, we're creating a page, not installing a page. But let's go ahead and click on that. And uh, we get our typical page layout, which we're used to here. The cool thing is, uh, in future updates, so the actual V6 that rolls out, the new default is going to be the full width. So you won't have to do this, which probably all of us end up doing. We basically go to settings, which now is a tab within your document settings here. So we have our outline and then our settings. We will title the page. Let's call this our home page. And we'll make this published. And then we, in the future, could leave this as default template, and it will be the no container header footer, which is this here. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and what you'll notice, so let's click on Cornerstone, and I'm going to open this up in a new tab by holding down Command on my Mac here. This will open up the back end. You'll notice that what we just did created a page here on the back end of WordPress for us, but we never had to leave the builder. Here's our list of pages. Uh, so we have our page. This is where we're at now, and we can begin working. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is in our workspace here, we have some global buttons up here, which then each break down into individual um, tabs that you can uh, find additional settings within. So uh, the inspector, if you have an element that you're inspecting, you'll be used to this. Uh, our elements library, this here. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm going to load this up and I'm actually going to refresh so my section shows this is a little bug that is being worked on now. So here's my section. Uh, let's just drag an accordion in there. So you'll notice right now I'm inspecting the accordion and this is the inspector that we know and love. Now we get our breadcrumbs here. So section, row, column, accordion. And then within the accordion, I now have my accordion inspector. So I can go from like primary items, header, content, effects, customize, etc. So that's all housed within the element inspector. A couple other items, we have our templates here. So uh, we have our theme code templates. This was design cloud. This shows up right under templates. And then if you have templates, those are going to show up right in your workspace as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and then here we have our globals. And this is really nice. Instead of having to go into sub menus for colors and fonts, uh, we can simply go uh, from our global options to our global colors to our global fonts, which is all really, really nice. 
Uh, let's actually jump back to our outline here. You'll notice again, this all looks very similar. Um, a couple minor UI changes is that the top bar now is reserved for tabs and saving. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then the bottom has our breadcrumbs on the left and then some of our development features on the right. So uh, breakpoints, code, which includes our CSS, JS, global CSS, and global JS. Uh, and then our undo and redo buttons and our page preview uh, links. Now, one of the cool things, and this is one of the new things within uh, Cornerstone, is that instead of adding elements uh, like buttons that are global directly to the page, we can now create what are called components. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. I'm going to click this plus and I'm going to click component here. And now a component is what used to be a global block, but with a whole lot of enhancements. Now I will eventually do videos on all of this stuff. I'm sure in the future, uh, but what we're going to do is create a component and this is a set or like a canvas for our components. So we're going to title this, uh, you know, I don't know, buttons, right? Maybe something like that. And now within this set of buttons, I am going to create, let's go button boom and let's just make this something crazy like that and like that and so maybe this is our primary button and maybe uh, let's duplicate this you'll notice that duplicate and delete are now sort of part of this bottom bar here we'll duplicate this we'll make the background transparent and we will make a border on this. Now you'll notice that our color field actually has a color picker in it now. So you could come in here and select a color if you wanted to, which is pretty cool. Um, so there we have our two buttons. Now what I can do is I can right click on a button. I can say manage this button. We're going to call this one primary button one. And after we've actually named it, we also want to make sure we export it as a component. So we're going to go ahead and export as a component. And let's go ahead and export our secondary one as a component as well. Export component and save. Now we're going to jump over to our home page again here and we will click on our elements and you will now notice that we have components here and those components, I have primary button one and secondary button one. Now you might be thinking, okay, cool, but I had templates before where I could pull in my buttons. Um, and that's true, except these ones are now controlled at the component level, which is pretty awesome. So I can drag a button out here and I can click on that button and you'll notice right now I, I don't have any parameters set up. So it's literally the text is being controlled and everything. Um, but I can add this button here and then I might have, let's go ahead and, you know, make a new section. And then in the second section, I might have my secondary button, something like this. I'll go ahead and save now, you know, six months from now, a client says they actually want the primary button to be bright red. Well, cool. You have hundreds of these all over your site. You can actually click this bright red on your component level, click save. And now when we come back to the home page, anywhere we've used that button is now bright red. Now you might be thinking that's great, but I want some buttons to say click here and others to say learn more. I don't want them all to just have the same text as a component. And that is true. What's really cool here is you can actually set up parameters. So we can right click on this. We can click manage. We can go into edit parameters. And then while this might look intimidating, it's actually pretty straightforward. You come in here and a little bit of JSON, you might say uh, text, whoops, text and put some placeholder in here and then uh, this might say link and might just have something like that in there so once i do that you'll notice that we have parameters here so now we have text click here link and there it is. Now it has no idea what to do with those things. So what we can do now is actually map those fields. So what I can do is I can come in here and under link, I always want this to map to that parameter field. So I'll come in here and element parameter. And I think I made that link, right? So we'll pop that in here. Okay. And then uh, button text is our other one where we have learn more. We want this to be a parameter. And so under element parameters, we'll call this, I think we called it text, right? So hopefully those two line up. And so what that now does for us is we have these parameters here and we have them linked to the specific areas within our button element. 
So now when I jump over to our home page here, this says click here because that was the global, but I can now click on it. And on a case by case basis, I could say learn more for this one. And that's going to take us to, uh, I don't know, google.com. And then I actually want another button uh, right here. And this button is going to say click me. And that's going to take us to apple.com. So now I have two buttons there. One says learn more. One says click me. You can see in the bottom left hand corner of this window. When I hover on this one, it's going to take me to Google. When I hover on this one, it's going to take me to Apple. So those things worked. But if I come over to this component here and now it's been another six months and our client says they want this to be uh, I don't know. Let's go. Let's go green. They want this to be bright green. I can do that. I can save. And when I come back to my home page, doesn't matter what they were. They're all connected to the same component. And so those all change. And then I could do the same for my secondary button here, which is really cool. I don't have to have a bunch of different um, component documents. I can just have this buttons one and then keep a listing of all my different buttons, primary, secondary, etc., and control those from one place. So one other thing we're going to take a quick look at is uh, some of those settings. So if we jump into our cornerstone menu and we click on preferences, um, you'll notice this inset preview. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And this is kind of what we're used to before where uh, the cornerstone window here, let's go ahead and do this. So here's my preview. Here's what I'm working on. Let's go to the home page. It's probably just a better example. So it basically touches the edge here, touches the edge here on the right hand side. Uh, touches the edge on the top and touches on the bottom and you might you might like that that might be a setup that you like um, I find the inset preview is actually uh, super beneficial for separating my design a little bit so if I click on this and now I look you'll notice there's this quick little border here um, that sort of separates everything out I think this is phenomenal just while you're designing you get a better sense it's a little bit of margin and it just helps you get a better sense for how your design fits on the page now, one thing I completely neglected to show here, but I do think is amazing, and this is not by my own discovery. Corey posted this over in the beta forums, but I thought that I would share this with you guys because it is, in my opinion, so incredible. Um, but you know that I have the dev uh, toolkit turned on, which is this guy right down here. Um, if I click on that, we get a lot of sort of under the hood access. And so one of the things we're going to do, you don't even need to know how to necessarily do this. If you just follow these steps, uh, I will include uh, this little snippet in the description for the video. But under our data store here, under preferences, we can click on edit state. So let's go ahead and do that. And we see all of this here. And uh, all we need to do, right, is under these here which are, you'll notice like a bunch of key bindings right here. So within our key bindings, we are, and you can see I already have this added in here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that for a second. We are gonna just add a comma after this one, which is one of the default ones that you'll notice or should be one of the default ones uh, when you open this up. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste this in here. And this is inspector breakout mode mod B, which just basically means when I hit command B on my keyboard, it's gonna go into this inspector breakout mode. So we'll go ahead and save. Uh, we're gonna click on this little play button here too to apply the changes. And now what this allows me to do, let's jump back over. Let's see, are we on my homepage? We are on my homepage. Um, so uh, what this allows me to do, let's say I wanted to add something uh, here, like a, I don't know, uh, let's do a div. And we'll just pop this div right in here. And we want the background to be um, dynamic content, right? Like we want some ACF field or something like that to be making this blue. Now you could put in dynamic content in here that you copy from somewhere else and paste and it should work. But now with this uh, inspector breakout, we can simply hit command B on my keyboard. And if you watch over here, watch what happens, command B, everything turns into a fillable field with dynamic content. So now I could come in here, pull up some dynamic content. These aren't gonna make sense, but I could pull up some dynamic content and pop that in there and something else in here. And that way I'm now controlling my background, uh, initial state and interactive state. Um, other things where this could come in super useful is if you were um, to want to position something and that position is based on an ACF field or something else in your database, uh, previously, right, things like, uh, you know, like self flex, right? I can't fill these in dynamically. But if I go into breakout mode, I can now put values in here 
dynamically. So you'll notice, you know, again, that one wouldn't make sense, but I can do something like this. Self flex is going to be controlled by whatever this field is here. Um, very, very cool feature that you could turn on or you can turn off just with a simple shortcut command B or whatever you set that key binding to. Again, I just thought that this was worth including in this video because I have already found this so useful and I think you guys will too. Thanks so much and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.